Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about titles and what they mean. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, can you talk about the roles in IT and what the responsibilities, responsibilities of those roles are? For example, architect, tech lead and QA. And what role or what title would you aim for? I'm working as a technical consultant and I do development, but I'm very confused about these tags and the responsibilities that come associated with them. So the short answer to this is that I can't give you a short answer because we would we would have to go through, I would have to make a much longer video about the different role because there's such a range of roles and then we have other complications which is something I'm going to touch a little bit on as well which is that some titles guys are actually relevant to know about and they are very common and there are things that you, there are they, there are people out there in the world that you're going to meet who has this role and then you have titles that is highly niched like where they practically mean nothing it's something that is so specific and so rare that most most people will go their entire career without meeting a person that does this sort of thing so you have a, a spectrum of titles where you have some people who work in a very niche thing or do something very specific and you have the things that are very common common things or common titles would be things like junior developer senior developer or mid-level developer something like that tech lead is a good one which is an example we're going to touch on that and architect is also fairly sort of common and QA has a it's also a very common term that you might hear about now the thing with these examples is that the architect and the QA are roles that you may not actually encounter when you do work the thing and that's kind of where I say that it's okay guys to not know what all of these things mean for example the QA now this may be confusing to you but when you ask me what, what role what of these sort of roles would I be looking for well QA wouldn't even be on my list because QA would be a completely different f uh, expertise a QA or a quality assurance person is for most intents and purposes someone is not an engineer it's not a developer it's a person who focuses on quality of the application and that I'm very sorry to say means mostly that they test features that's what they are QA is you can in many 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 scenarios even though this is not completely accurate think of a QA as a tester a person who gets paid to manually test for the most part an application now the best QAs are the sort of people who do more than this ideally they should have coding skills and have the ability to help with automated testing and uh, actually raise the quality of the application but that's just not the reality of the situation most companies treat QAs and testers as these it's the same thing for most companies so that's why the, the, and I understand that this is confusing because there's so many titles so I'll yeah, let's just focus on the ones here that are relevant to us as software developers because I'm just assuming that you are a software developer or aspiring to be one so the titles that you ideally should know about that is relevant for you and your career is junior developer mid-level or C, like just developer who doesn't systems developer software developer senior developer and then after senior developer, this is where it gets optional. It comes, uh, you go into tech lead or team lead. You can, in some cases, you might not have a tech lead or a team lead or something like that. You might just have a senior developer that fills this role. So tech lead, in essence, you can think of a tech lead as a sergeant in a sergeant. That's what the best thing I can describe it as. It's just the the next level. It's the low, the closest manager you will ever have. If it even is a manager, you doesn't have to be a manager, but it's this person's responsibility is just to administrate and facilitate the daily work that the team does within a software development team. It's just a person who makes sure that the stories are where they're supposed to be that if something happens the stakeholders ha come, can come in and like talk to this person and this person kind of knows everybody and knows how to get in touch with the right developer or knows roughly what the state of the all the stories are it's the person who can ideally help out with junior developers if they have questions and maybe a rubber duck with a senior if they have some they are stuck on something and they want someone to talk to so the, I, 
th this role, it doesn't have to be an explicit role. It might be just that you have a more senior experience on the team that takes care of this. A an example would be in my own team where I work. That's exactly how it goes. We don't have a designated senior tech lead or team lead, someone who is responsible for our team. We just have me who is like, because we need someone who deals with all of these things. And since I was open to the idea when I, they asked me if I could take that role, I did, but it's not my official title. I don't have the title tech lead or team lead. I just manage all of this and that's pretty much it. And you might find the same thing. And in some cases, a team lead or a tech lead doesn't necessarily have to be someone who just works with one team. That might be a person who is slightly above that where it gets very tricky for you to make a distinction between a tech lead and an architect. And that's why I tell you that it's very hard sometimes to like really pinpoint what every single role does explicitly because there's so many terms and things that kind of differ and people make up their own definitions. So architect would be the next meaningful thing that you should know about as a software developer. An architect, you can think of an architect as the person who is responsible for the technical vision of the project. Their main focus is to practice in, in essence to take discussions from stakeholders and business people and people who run the company more or less or at least the business part of the company and understand where the company is going and then it's then their responsibility to facilitate the communication between the development team the engineering teams and the business side or the other stakeholders so that you can create a technological roadmap a tech roadmap that all of the different teams that might be involved agree on that this is feasible, this is the roadmap, this is our schedule, this is what we're going to do Q1, Q2, Q3, etc, etc. This is what their focus their focus area is. And you might you have different types of architects. Uh, some architects are really, really granular, like they really get involved, where they just have decisions that like where they basically go in and set everything up. They set up the st they decide on everything from what libraries you're using to how the network calls should look and how data models should look all the way up to like infrastructure level and so forth. So you might have an architect that works on multiple levels, but that is in essence what their their job is. You can think them as uh, well, yeah, it's as an architect, like, yes, if you're building a building, you have all the teamsters and all the different construction workers who set the whole thing up. And it's the architect's job to provide the blueprints, if that makes sense. And then you have really high level architects sometimes who just set guidelines for how to do things. It depends, once again, on how big is the company, how involved is the architect and like how do they produce work. This is a role that is a little bit controversial to a lot of developers. I've had more than a few candidates uh, who came into our office and the first question they asked was, do you have an architect? Because they hate architects. The reason why they hate architects is because they're dealing with an architect who is bad and a bad architect is like if I think this is hilarious because mo most companies are really afraid of getting a bad developer you have no idea how much worse it is to get a bad architect because you get a bad architect who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about who idea because ideally an architect should be at the pinnacle of a software developer it should be a person who has advanced to the point where they know all the tools they've been working so long that they kind of just know this but the thing is you don't have to have that sometimes you get this i have a friend who became an architect the day after he graduated from college the day after. He has never worked ever, never built a system in his life, but now he's an architect. I shudder at the decisions that he may be, be making for the, his clients because he, he simply does not know how to set up a system. And that's what an architect should be doing. But in some cases that is not the case. They, they get involved and mess things up. That's bad. Last term that you should know about or last tag is CTO. Now, the difference between a CTO and an architect is up for discussion, but in general terms, the CTO, the chief technical uh, techno technology officer, is the highest level that you can get within an IT company. That is the absolute highest within the tech region, at the least, that you can be in general terms. And then you might have multiple other like permutations, like VP of engineering and like all these other made-up titles that practically is 
you don't have to know about these guys, uh, th this uh, these tags guys. They are just words people are throwing around. So if you know about CTO, that's going to be fine enough. And this person is the uh, uh, absolute authority. What that person does is usually very similar to what the architect does, depending on how the company is structured. But they uh, primarily focus on the same sort of issues. They talk to stakeholders, like what's up and coming in the business world, and they sit in a lot of meetings. In a very small company, if you're like a really small startup under 50 people or something like that, the CTO might actually be coding. It might be one of the founders, which is the case, the case in many situations where if you're a bunch of people who get together and you have one tech person, well, that usually becomes the CTO and you sit on multiple roles at the same time. So what I want you to take away from this is that titles and tags and so forth may be very confusing to you and that's okay and the vast majority of titles you don't have to know about. It's not important for you to know what a VP of engineering is or like what they're supposed to be doing or anything like that because in essence this is a term that only becomes relevant to you when you already are at the level where you can handle this sort of responsibility it's not something like this is not something that is all that important because you can look at every job posting and they will want different things it's a fluff term if that makes sense the terms that usually or the titles that usually are relevant to you is junior developer software developer, software engineer, senior developer, tech lead, which is just a person who is responsible for making sure that all the developers within the team know what they're supposed to be doing and that they have a way to shield themselves from stakeholders and so forth. It's basically the sergeant of, uh, of the squad. And then you have an architect, which is usually an even higher level. These, this person manages the entire company's architecture and takes care of the technical overall technical vision is to make sure that all the teams know what they're supposed to be doing and sets up the technical roadmap. CTO basically runs the whole show. It's the person who has the absolute authority in general terms about engineering. And if you ask me what I personally am looking to become in my career, well, if there is, if that doesn't change, I would very much like to be an architect, not to a high level I would very much like to be more of a coach for different teams and be involved at both the coding level and at the actual infrastructure level and the reason is because I've always wanted to push my, the, all the companies that I've ever, I've ever worked in uh, I've noticed a trend and that is that if you see an improvement that you want to make and you think that this is going to be super valuable it's really really hard to get that to happen unless you are the architect or the CTO. You need, to, and th this is, your bosses will tell you differently, oh, you should just push for improvements and so forth. The, the reality is that that never happens in, as, in essence, because there's so much work for you to, when you have no authority to get anything done. You can't set up the roadmap for any team ups apart from your own, perhaps, even some, and sometimes you can't even do that. And if you are an architect, you're paid to do that. That's your job. Your job is to spot these sorts of improvements or these sort of tasks that will make a big difference on the on the work that is being done for the entire company. And that's the sort of person I would love to be, to be able to bridge the uh, and be like a mediator between the engineers because I know where they're coming from and I know what they want and then be and talk to the stakeholders because I under I want to understand like how do we have a good business business and how do we keep our business mindset that's at least what I want and what you want may be different but that's at least the, the thing that I'm looking for have a great day